Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-68. On our previous episode, the party was pitted against a group of orcs bent on using the mounts as the food source. Some quick thinking magic from an arcane scroll helped whittle down the aggressors while hand-to-hand -hand combat finished off the rest. The party bedded down for the night and tripled their watch in the event that any stragglers would attempt to take advantage of the darkness. The next morning the party awoke to rain and feeling ragged. We rejoined them three days later as they traversed the Fartuk interior. Is this all it is going to do from now on? Rain? exclaimed Bolger, the former sailor. The rest of the group plodded forward in silence, but their expressions agreed with the gnome's outlook. As the diminutive member of the group continued to complain, Lady Irena stopped her mount, causing the group to stop as well. Turning in her saddle, she gave Bolger a stern rebuke. Look, none of us enjoying the weather aside from peepers. I don't like traveling in this mess. Fargus doesn't. Cave doesn't. None of us do. But your complaining isn't helping the moisture or the morale. We are all mad. We're just dealing with it in silence, which is something I would suggest to you. An angry look washed over the sailor's face, but changed quickly as he could tell there was no winning the argument. A quick apology was met with one from the elven mage as well. Fargus sighed deeply as Peepers the Axe Beat continued to catch water drops in his mouth. Everyone needs to just relax. The weather is horrible, but there is a reason this place is so green. Let's just keep moving forward and maybe, I don't know, find something to do or find a settlement where we can dry out. The group nodded in sullen agreement except for Cabe Silvertongue. The bard had dismounted and looked out over the valley that they were moving through. The others noticed that the half-elven male seemed to have spotted something in the distance. Sister Elaine queried the bard about his concentration and he responded that he thought he saw something but he wasn't certain. Lady Irena also dismounted and looked out across the valley where he thought he saw something and she was able to confirm it. Turning to the group she informed them that the two noticed slight tendrils of smoke at a mountain on the far side of the valley. The group felt that this was the only source of life they had seen in the past few days and opted to head that way. Changing direction to a southeastern track the group nudged their mounts forward. An hour later they stood on the banks of a swollen river. Logs, leaves, and other debris whooshed past them as the rapid waters seemed rather potent. Let's fan out and see if we can find a narrow spot to ford this river, ordered Fargus, the human ranger. The group separated in two and went opposite directions, only returned several minutes later to confer on their findings. Karina and the elven folk had gone north, and while not finding an easy ford, they did find a narrow spot that may suit the group. Fargus, Sister Elaine, and Bolger reported that the southern leg appeared to be very dangerous as it opened up wide and fed by an additional tributary. The party moved north and examined the area the three had found. The passage appeared to be plausible but still dangerous. The group contemplated options and Fargus finally decided that they would lash a rope to him and he would wade out into the river. He mused that being the heaviest had to have some reward. The group skeptically spoke out about the plan, but conceded that it was a solid option if they wanted to continue their eastern trek. Fargus lashed the rope around his waist, and both Sister Elaine and Cave Silvertongue double-checked the work. The rope was laid out as the rain increased in intensity and the ranger entered the river. With the group holding onto the rope and inching it out as he carefully moved across the river, the tension was thick. Once the human male reached the middle of the swollen river, he began to hop to keep his head above water. Bolger yelled out to see if the man wanted to be pulled back, but Fargus waved his hand off and over towards the other side. 
After several excruciating minutes, the man finally reached the far side of the river, alive but soaked to the skin. Looking around, he motioned for the group to move further north where the trees were partially submerged in the rushing water. Both ends of the rope were tied off to the tree and each side was tested with the party members hanging on the rope. Sister Elaine offered to go first while guiding Fargus' mount across as well. The horses were less than enthusiastic to venture into the waters, but her calm demeanor prevailed and the horses were able to cross, albeit grudgingly. Bulger went next, followed by Lady Irena, whose mount proved more skittish than expected and nearly pitched the mage into the water. Karina requested to go next so that Cabe could push peepers along if the axe beak didn't follow her. The waif guided her mount into the water that seemed to be pulsing stronger and stronger while the axe beak watched from the shoreline in anxiousness. Turning, she whistled to her pet and didn't realize a large log was headed right for her and her mount. As she beckoned peepers into the river, the log struck the horse in the front leg, knocking both beast and rider over, plunging them into the water. The party yelled as Karina was thrown into the rushing river, along with her flailing mount. Upon hearing the young woman yell, Peepers charged forward and flung itself into the waters. Party members on both sides quickly ran down the river, trying to assist the waif who was clearly in trouble. With all the rope used for the crossing, the other adventurers looked for anything they could throw to her, but started to lose ground in the spongy, rain-soaked grass. The group watched helplessly as they feared the worst for Karina, until they spotted her lizard creature rapidly moving down the rushing current after her. As the water pushed the slender woman further away from the party, they could only hope that the axe beak would be able to save her. Fargus looked to Lady Irena and asked her if she had any magic that could resolve the issue, but the grim look said it all. Bulger had not given up hope and had rushed forward on his horse, zipping past Fargus and Irena, who had been running. Lightning began to streak and rain poured forth, dampening even the elven eyesight. As minutes passed, a dark figure approached the ranger and mage. The sullen face of Bulger spoke volumes as he shook his head. I... I, I found her horse. It was smashed on the rocks. But no... but no sign. No sign. As his voice cracked, I cannot find her. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast... And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.